my colleagues and I, you know, we we talk about in depth, in length, about some of these uh, concerns, the challenges, and what we're coming up against. Uh, the 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 younger uh, generation of the learners, uh, because we're where they have not grown up with that, look with the thought philosophy, the protocol, the, you know, all of that, that they are not. Um, being respectful to and treating these people, the experienced um, elders, ex the people with the wisdom, the knowledge, they are not treating them in a way that says, we respect you as our elder, as the person with the knowledge. And instead they challenge, you know, a lot of what do we say. They say that we're um, holding out the language from them. but. We're not, because in a way we are following protocol, and that is, um, as you know, you know, you opari or you offer tobacco or, you know, in some gesture for that knowledge. And when, until that is um, done, conducted that protocol, then a person is not obligated to share any of that unless they themselves volunteer it. And in the Lakota way, that is not, um, that is often a taboo because they say you're pushing yourself on, on somebody. And so we are concerned about, you know, the, um, this treasure of that being, you know, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like we put it away, we close the lid on it because they're old now, they're, you know, They've done their time, and you know they have um, some issues that are not our issues. So we're just gonna put the lid on that for now, you know, while we go do what we are meant to do. And that's and we understand where the young are coming from because we've been there, teach learning the language, the learning English as a second language, you know, as first language learners of Lakota. Uh, language, we experienced um, learning English just like the way they're learning Lakota now. But there were, um, you know, the strategies that were taken to for us to learn. It's um, sometimes not um, popular, but that's okay because it worked, you know. But for some of us, we maintain that language despite some of the abuse, some of, you know, the atrocities that you hear about with the language loss. So, you know, we look at that, we understand where these um, learners are coming from, uh, but we also, unlike English, they have to also know that there is an important part of uh, the language that they have to embrace in here, as uh, spiritual people, as people of um, a nation that um, think of themselves as a whole rather than individually. And so a lot of these, you know, they call all a lot of what I'm talking about old school. And so I guess we are old school, but we, um, we also know the reason that we know these things and the reason we do what we do and it's to hold on to the principles of our ancestors, the beliefs, the values, because those are an important part of who we are as Lakota people. So that is where I am coming from. I, I, I don't like to correct people when they, like when a woman <clears throat> says a male term in, in, you know, inappropriately, um, because they tend to see us as, you know, being this person that is a know-it-all and you know and so we don't like to come off you know doing that and so it's you know there's a transition somewhere there's a line somewhere that we have to meet and say okay today is a, a new generation there are so many things to relearn to learn on both sides how can we do that? How can we 
come together without losing those values, the principles of, of who we are as Lakota people through the language. And so that is a challenge that um, I have to embrace because I don't see too many of our um, language speakers coming forward because that's just not their way. And I, I guess I'm old school, but I can be new school also. You say when um, people today say, he honey wash day, that is actually not Lakota thought. That is English thought being um, said in Lakota because what all we did was take, we took good morning and we, we said it in Lakota, but it's not the thought. It, I remember growing up and people would, uh, upon greeting each other or seeing each other, they would say, he uh, honey lachji, you know, oh, it's a good, it's a, so early in the morning, you know, like, um, so what are you doing this time of the morning, you know, or um, they'd say, um, some greeting like, oh, or, you know, they, they say, you know, it's inquiring upon their well-being, you know, and you know, they don't say good morning because we don't know if it's a good morning for that person. It may be for us. And those are words that we, um, that we are, becoming aware of losing, you know, the thought about um, behind language. And that's really, um, that's significant because as uh, we have a Lakota language teachers who are going into the schools and teaching the language. And a lot of, uh, many of these teachers are young and they may not uh, be fluent speakers or as first language learners. And so they don't have that um, Lakota thought and philosophy um, already. So they are taking English thought and turning it, translating it to Lakota. And a good example of how that happens and is being used in the classroom is the Bernstein Bears. Now that's an English story. English tale, children's story, but it's been taken and translated to Lakota. So the you have now a Lakota story with English thought. Okay. What really should be happening is we, ter we tell our stories. Example, the, the Iktomi story. Tell that in Lakota to our children so they understand why these stories are. Okay, what is the purpose of a of, of Bernstein bears, you know, story to our children, to our way of life?